Hello and welcome to episode 65 of the Physique Development Podcast. We are going to be going over my competition season today. So first, I wanted to thank you guys for all of the support that you've given me throughout this season, the people that have followed along on YouTube, the podcast, Instagram, wherever it may be, and just cheering for me along the way. I so appreciate it. And I really couldn't do it without all of the support I had from those near and far. So I'm so, so thankful for that. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Alex as well. This is something I wanted to talk about on this podcast a little bit, but um, we've mentioned it of we wear a lot of different hats when we are together, uh, being business partners, being husband and wife, as well as being coach client, and just all of the layers that go into that. And there was a lot of people that just showed up so hard for me throughout this competition season, which like I said, I am so grateful. Could not do it without that. But I don't think people understand the impact that a coach has or how invested a coach is. And when it comes to competing, they're along for the ride with you. They're there experiencing every emotion that you're experiencing, and they're pouring into your competition season. And on show day, even if they're not physically there with you, sometimes they are they're there all day doing stuff and focusing on you. And show days take a lot out of coaches. I've experienced it personally and not even to the full scale that Alex has. And it's so easy to just talk about the competitor. And I always like to shed light on talking about the coach and talking about the experience and what that all looks like. So I want to give a huge, huge thanks to Alex because he was so supportive and so incredible. And I could not have done this prep with without him. And it's also something where I made a post on Instagram and I said, here's to wearing one less hat. And one of the questions here is if Alex is going to coach me through my reverse. And he definitely is. He is always going to be a part of my training. He's always going to be a part of just, even if it's something that we don't have like specific check-ins the same way, we're always going to collaborate on whatever my goals are together. And when I talk about wearing one last hat, we kind of talked about this last night of it's just been nice to be husband and wife and business partner. Partner. And while he is still my coach, again, the thought process, the emotions, the uh everything you have to think about when you are a coach, plus adding on those other layers, make things really difficult. And I just feel like we've been able to really focus on us and not have that extra dynamic um, to be dealing with because there is such a difference between being in prep and coaching versus not being in prep and coaching. So I just wanted to open it up with a huge, huge thanks um, and a huge shout out to uh, my <laughs> husband, coach, business partner, Alex Bush. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that I've, I've vocalized this to Sue and I've vocalized this to some of our closest friends is that I just, I've looked forward to just being able to look at my wife in a bikini and say that she looks incredible and that she looks hot rather than saying like, oh, I don't know, we need to keep pulling off some body fat off of your glutes. <laughs> we need to pull body fat from here. Um, and something with my brain is that it's literally 24 seven. So, um, something that I was falling into and, and realizing how exhausted I was becoming towards the end was just the constant, uh, um, evaluation of, of things that Sue said, the, like how her body was looking. And I felt like I was just, as soon as I woke up to the time I went to bed, I was taking in data collection on, uh, Sue's body. If, if she was having, uh, like s some breaking out on her chin or things of that nature, I would take that into account. If she was looking more tired, if she was, uh, expressing like higher levels of hunger, everything that she, uh, you know, throughout the day of just, I just need to be your husband. I don't need to, you're you, like anyone else I'm coaching mm -hmm. I'm and not getting an 18th of the data mm -hmm. that I got you know, in this experience. And so, um, I'm happy happy to have that kind of weight off of my back. I tried very heavily to not have that be in the back of my mind, but I am, as, as my clients know, as my close friends know, I hate losing and <laughs> I did not want to have any stone left unturned that would put me in a position where I was, um, I had the opportunity to understand and collect the data that wasn't going to be of value. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm back into a stage where I can just see my wife in a bikini and gawk at how beautiful she is rather than be like, ah, we've got some things to change. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm happy to be in that, that role. 
Yeah, and it's with the data that he talked about. We had a talk about that actually after North Coast and just expressing that I made a very conscious effort throughout all of prep to not complain or to not like drag on about things because I knew it was already going to be hard. Not only like I am very uh, firm in my thought that like you shouldn't sit and dwell during prep because that's just going to make prep harder in general of thinking about I'm hungry or I'm tired or insert uh, like thing here, but also within having your coach in the same area with you all of the time. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm hungry where at first I know that saying it doesn't make it any better. Then it adds pressure to him of like, oh, she's hungry and she's dealing with this. So I, from our check-ins to begin with, with, I was always like, okay, these things are going on, but I'm going to answer these questions in reference to like how I know energy levels will be through prep or how I know hunger is going to be through prep. And we made that conscious decision. And then I didn't even realize until after North Coast how much data that he was taking in on a day-to-day -day basis, even without me vocalizing things of, like he said, seeing if I am breaking out or seeing if the bags under my eyes are bigger, if I'm moving a little bit slower, I'm more irritable, I'm not having the best nights of sleep, all of these things he was taking in. And anytime I talked about like my schedule being full, he would start in his brain of analyzing, okay, what do I need to do to make prep easier so that she's able to do X, Y, and Z? And that wasn't something that I was even thinking about, but he was taking in constantly and going through all of these scenarios and analyzing them. And that's a lot to put on to someone. Like he said, he was getting uh, so much more data from me than any other client that he's working with. And he also, of course, has you know a little bit of bias <laughs> an extra love towards me of, okay, I want my wife to feel good instead of seeing her so exhausted, seeing her tired and knowing I still have to push her harder. Yeah. And, and I think that as we get into kind of the comparison of um, show one to show three, you guys will notice from Sue's conditioning that it, from show one to show three, I wore more and more of the coach hat relative to the husband hat. And uh, that was in my eyes what I don't want to get too far ahead of us, but the the one thing that held us back the most in show one was that I was more wearing the husband hat than I was wearing the coach hat of like choosing to look out for my wife rather than making the right call as a coach, which is a very, I mean, that's a hard line to walk on a, a general basis, but I realized that after show one, which was, that's why you see such a, and and also we've got things that we're going to talk about here, mm -hmm. but there was a, a big shift from the look that was brought to show one to the look that was brought to show three. Um, and a lot of that alongside a handful of other things um, within just posing in those different aspects um, was a, a big part of why we saw such a great change. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into some things. And we also have some questions from Instagram, which are great. Um, I'm really excited to answer a lot of these, but going to kind of give you a recap of the season as a whole. So our original plan was to only do two shows, and that was to do the um, Indie Pro, which the amateur portion was called the Midwest Battle of the Champions, and then have five weeks in between and go into Junior Nationals. The reason that I had to do a show to begin with before going to Junior Nationals is I had to recall qualify because the last time I competed was in 2020 and your qualification only stays for one year. And it was in 2020 that they did allow an exception uh, for 2020 and through 2021, I believe, of the top five in a class could go on and get that qualification because so many shows got canceled and pushed and everything was in upheaval. <laughs> so it then went back to the normal rules this year of you have to place top two in an open class to be able to get that qualification moving forward. We do have a full show day vlog if you're interested, and we'll have that linked in the show notes in the description box going over that indie show. And that was uh, quite an experience to go through. <laughs> it was. Um, do you want to give some context to, to show one? 
Uh, well, what I will say just about this season in general, which is going to be important for you guys to kind of take in stride moving forward, is this was 100% the most responsibility that I have ever had in a prep. So each prep has, of course, had its own hard and had its own hurdles that I've had to go over. And I've definitely had some hard preps in the past. But when it came to this prep, this is a prep that I just had so much I had to show up for. And that's not me using it as an excuse or anything like that. It's more of just stating a fact of there was a lot more going on in my life and a lot more that needed me this prep than I'd ever experienced before. And I talked about after that first show um, in that YouTube video and in the podcast that I just... I had overlooked some things going into that show because of how full my schedule was. And I honestly went into that show thinking that there was no way I wasn't going to get a qualification, not only because I had such belief and faith in myself and what Alex and I were doing, but I also had been to that show before and I knew that there obviously was going to be competition, but I just knew like, hey, you're going to be nationally competitive this year. So like getting a regional qualification isn't going to be difficult for you. Same. <laughs> I... um. I went into that with um, expectations that we would get the qualification and be able to move forward because I only had planned on doing the Indy Pro and then pushing uh, hard into what would have been Junior Nats. Um, so I went into that with expectations that were not fulfilled. Yes. So we woke up on show morning. It was a crazy week getting everything ready for it. I felt great. We had, I looked incredible. Um, and within that peak, that was something that we did um, deplete me into the show. And then the two days before the show, I did have more food in place um, and have a little bit higher load there. Um, but it was also my first time on stage in two years. So I had some shaken. I had a lot of nerves that got the best of me and ended up that, not that my whole back shot or my legs completely looked awful, but it definitely was not what we had presented in the pictures and the video that we had taken leading up to it. Like I said, I had let stress get the best of me and I didn't do a good job of taking time off going into the show to focus on myself. It was just life is spinning and we're trying to get to this show. We'll get the qualification then I have five weeks to kind of get my feet under me and like really focus for this national show, which is what means the most to me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> with the, with the food aspect, this is going to be the, it was the first peak week that Sue and I had done together. And so I went with more of a conservative approach that I thought was going to be conservative that turned into being, um, as full as we could have gotten probably. So I went with an approach that I thought would be lesser and we would leave her a little bit flat, but we actually went for a very full look <clears throat> that I thought would benefit us. Um, and within that show, we ended up, uh, placing third in the, the open class and, what the the look that was was gone for at that show was a smaller, more petite shape that I would say, um, less muscle density than I had um, experienced in the, the year prior uh, of what the judges were were looking for, and so we missed the target in terms of what the judges were looking for, and that's the biggest thing within bikini is that it is it is the division that is going to be very specific to what the look is that they're going to be going for, whether that be a harder or softer look and more muscular or less muscular look, a more petite frame and, and looking for overall shape to a degree. Um, and you don't know until you get there. And so with that, uh, that was you know how show one went. Do you have more to add to that? Yeah. I, I think the only thing to add there is just because you do well on a regional show at a regional stage doesn't mean that you're going to do well on a national stage. And just because you don't do well on a regional stage doesn't mean you're not going to do well on a national stage. And I see a lot of girls of they will go to a regional stage and they'll get nationally qualified, whether it's because there was literally only two people in their class or they are at a smaller show and they win and they think, oh, I either won or I got the overall. That means like I'm ready for the national 
emotional stage. And I know a lot of coaches who use that as their benchmark of, okay, I want you to win an overall or win your class before I feel comfortable putting you on the national stage. But one really freaking important thing to note if you are a competitor is that the regional stage doesn't always represent the national stage. And they do choose in different areas and different shows what look they're going for. And that's not always the look that they're going for on the national stage. And that's something that is hard to take forward as a competitor because you're like, hey, they've outlined the criteria. I see what's winning. And now something that doesn't fit that criteria is winning here. But that's just how things go. And you have to keep moving forward instead of playing the blame game of what should or shouldn't have happened. Uh, So just a note that the regional stage is not just a complete step and you just go to the national stage right after it. There's a lot of different variables going in and hopefully you do have a coach that's going to shoot you straight on when you should step on the national stage or when you should stay on the regional stage. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Correct. All right. So what's... uh... What's the time frame between show one and show two? And uh, why don't you walk people through that? Yeah, there were two weeks, I, I believe, so. two weeks before between show one and show two. Um, actually, I do know it was two weeks because we were looking at shows right after because obviously we had not planned for one. So then we had to scramble and look for one. And there was a show we wanted to do that was the following weekend. But since we had not planned for it, there was no way to do a peak week and get travel and get everything set and truly make a change in my physique that we needed to make. So that's another important thing to take into consideration is that even though I knew I was going to be nationally competitive this year, it wasn't going to be in my best interest to turn around and go straight into another peak because we still needed to figure out some different details. And of course, taking into the account the stress that that puts on your body to go back to back peak weeks, to have travel involved and all of that. So we had two weeks um, in between that. And then we chose to go to another show in Ohio because we had not chosen or we had not planned to do other shows. We hadn't plan to travel in those five weeks in between. And travel is something that's really difficult within our schedule. With the workload that we have, um, it's hard to to get away. And it's hard to stay on track and just to check all the boxes that we need to. Not stay on track from like a prep standpoint. You're saying staying on track from a work standpoint, standpoint. just to clarify. Yes, I appreciate that clarification. Because with prep, I I know I'm going to stay on track. I don't have an issue with that. It does take, of course, more preparation. But it was, all right, this is a show that's about two hours away. Um, It was a cool setup that they had prejudging and finals back to back. So from the time bikini started to when it ended, it was only 45 minutes. And like we had the whole morning and then we had that 45 minutes. We finished up and we were able to like drive home and sleep in our own bed, which was a huge pro of why we chose that show as well as we were like, all right, we'll get the qualification and then we'll have three weeks Um yeah, three weeks leading into Junior Nats, and we'll be able to fine-tune everything and then get to Junior Nats and be good to go. So we go to North Coast Championships, which was in Kent, Ohio. Um, I will say that uh, the drive up there didn't make me feel the safest, (laughs) but (laughs) that is just a complete side note. And uh, there were some things that I, again, fell short on, which was very difficult to recognize that the first show of letting my nerves get the best of me and I still was practicing posing but not practicing it enough, um, those things really frustrated me. And I was like, all right, I'm going to nail down this posing. I'm going to get everything set. And I did. And I looked incredible that morning. It was the best I ever looked. I felt so confident within how I looked. Uh, But I also chose to do my own tan with one of the DIY kits. And the reason I chose that is because the tanning company that was going to be at the show was an off-name 
tanning company. It wasn't like an LSR or Pro Tan. And I've also found that Pro Tan, while it's a great tanning company, I'm not saying like this is the only one you should go with. It does lean red on skin types. And I have red undertones to my skin. Then plus I'm wearing a red suit. I knew it would draw extremely red on me. And so I decided to go with another DIY kit. And then I found out after the fact that the company Spring was using ProTan and then they're just like a third party company. And so I didn't move forward because I've learned from past experiences like, hey, it's not always the best to use the host tan or you need to really find out what tan works for you. But within that I didn't trial the tan beforehand. It ended up being way, way, way too light. And leaving that show and immediately post that show, we had talked about that the judges has kind of cast me to the side because of that tan uh, and that I really didn't have a chance, so to speak, for lack of a better word. Um, but once we got the feedback, uh, the tan we realized wasn't um, the only reason <laughs> that I wasn't quite given the time of day on that stage. Um, but I ended up getting fourth at that show, um, which was really difficult and emotional. Um, not only feeling like I had failed the first show um, due to things that were in my control, but then feeling like I had failed again with things that were in my control, um, but then also feeling like there was so much out of my control because it didn't feel like things were lining up um, in the way that we were seeing them. Yeah. Um, I had said before we went into recording this, this is two and a half weeks after the season's over um, that we're recording this. And I had said that you're going to get a little less emotion, but it also feels like as we're talking about it, it's kind of opening a wound a little bit. Um, so with both shows, um, as we're, we're navigating through both of these, I think that um, one of the things that was most challenging for me is that um, they were very both very rushed, um, prejudging and, and, uh, just the whole show in general. Uh, like for example, I had clients sending for that first, for the first show, uh, I had clients sending me from the live stream and for the prejudging, there was, uh, seven, seven girls in the class, eight girls mm -hmm. in class, something like that. And they had them all in one call out mm, I think or so. maybe they did two, maybe they ended up doing two. I don't remember. Anyway, they only had them on stage for the call out for, uh, I think 12 seconds. Uh, they had them on there for their front shot, had them turn to the back and really had them file off as soon as they turned back around. It was frustrating. Show two was almost identical in that aspect, um, not taking anything. The, the big thing I want to drive home here is like if you were any of the other competitors that were at the show, I'm not there's I have no bad blood with you. I'm not uh, you know, speaking to your physique, not looking good or, or what have you. I'm speaking to how things were run. Um, so that was the the biggest frustration for me is that I did not feel as though that the time was allotted for the athletes to truly go up there and present what they had worked so hard to do. Yeah. And it was something that if you've competed before, um, you po possibly have experienced this of like walking out on stage and the judge is not really looking up at you. And that's a really defeating feeling of, hey, I've worked really hard and you guys are all looking down or talking to one another. And that's happened to me multiple times when I've competed before, which again is extremely frustrating. But there was kind of, um, it, it was hard because it felt like they had already made a decision on me before I had even hit a pose. Um, and that was just really mentally hard when like prep tests you mentally so much. And anyone who has competed knows that to their core of it's not just a physical transformation. You are tested mentally every single day. And then to get to the quote end or get to when you're presenting everything and like so much emotion and mental capacity going into it and then feeling like they're not even looking at me was like a very big breaking point for me where I was just 
like torn of I've poured so much into this and I don't even get time on stage or I don't even get the decency of someone looking at me and actually judging my physique, um, which was just so difficult to navigate through. So ended up getting fourth place at that show. And when we came home, I mean, we were frustrated, angry, name the emotion here. But we got some time to sit that evening and the next few evenings and have some good conversation. And as crazy as it seems, as it seemed to say it in that moment, we were thankful for all of those experiences and all of those letdowns or missing the mark because I feel like Indy was a good wake up call for me because I've said throughout this whole prep of like, my priorities are always Alex and my relationship number one. And then it was like PD and then prep. And after Indy, Alex and I had a conversation. It was like, hey, prep needs to come above some of these other things. If we're really pouring this time and effort and money into it, like you need to have this as a sole priority. So that was a light switch or a switch for me of even though, again, I was pouring in so much, I realized that like the level of priority you have does matter. And like it needed to be that this prep is number one priority. And so then going into North Coast of feeling a lot more confident, we had nailed down things within our within my physique and we had nailed down some communication things between Alex and I. Um, and then leaving North Coast, we felt like we grew even more in our relationship and Alex was able to vocalize. Again, he's taking in all of this data. He's really fatigued and mentally exhausted. And he was it was great to hear his viewpoint because in prep, it's easy to be selfish because you're thinking about everything you're doing. Um, but then having the person closest to you express like, this is how I'm experiencing all the things that you're experiencing on top of also being involved and hands-on within this experience. Mm -hmm. So we were able to sit and talk and say that like North Coast was another wake up call for our communication like Alex was talking about with that husband hat and coach hat of him saying like this is where my breaking point is. This is what I need from you. And this is what we both need to do moving forward to be successful. Yeah. So going from North Coast, we decided to do a show the week after. Two weeks. Two weeks. So two weeks after we go into the the next show is yeah. And and within all of this, um, do you have off the top of your head like the weight change that we would have had from show three to show one or show one to show three? Uh, I believe for like uh, fully depleted, I like came in like two or three pounds lighter by the end of it. Um, but like my show day weight for my last show was I think like one of the highest. I didn't actually get the show day weight for the other ones. I only got the day before. Um, but I think that it was actually the highest just by how we filled me out and everything. Yeah. Um, so going into show three was uh, one that was actually here in town um, in Columbus. And so that one specifically um, was just a week before Junior Nats making things pretty challenging. Um, I had a game plan in place for us to have back-to-back -back peak weeks that I felt very confident in. Um, and I don't think that a the peak week could have gone any better than what the peak week did for that specific show. And so uh, we have you know some questions on how I went about the structure of the peak weeks. Um, show one was that back load that I talked about, and we fed directly into the show, um, did not train on Friday. I think I had her train Monday through Thursday. I, no, Sunday, Monday, took Tuesday off, train Wednesday, Thursday, take Friday off. And then in show two, I want to say I went with another backload, but I was more conservative. Mm -hmm. And I was happy with the look on show two. Uh, show two, I thought that peaking wise, we were in a good spot. We went on a little bit. It, it was a, it was we went on later because of how they structured it. So timing wise of of peaking of going on, I think at five o'clock, mm -hmm. so five p.m. for the five. first time is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, you want to sleep in a little bit later. Uh, don't want to be you know filling up for like meal wise just on a bunch of of substance as a whole. Um, so that was, but I was happy with the look at, at show two, went with another backload there. 
In show three, we went with a backload with a, I don't love this terminology, but it's like a, a dry off day. So it's kind of, you are, you're doing a backload. And then on uh, Friday, it's kind of a flex day of, it could just be back down to your baseline diet, uh, because we may have gotten to like 105% fullness, or if we need it, we'll push a little bit more food, but not to a true, like full backload to where we're titrating up every day. And so we went with that method and I was really happy with it because something that we had pulled from, from Sue's, um, massive data collection. Uh, the, the file for this is ginormous. I've, I've had to take out more iCloud space for it specifically. (laughs) Um, and so what we had pulled from some of this data that I was, I was, uh, not necessarily reluctant, but was not putting as much of uh, emphasis on was that the photos the day after, so she'd have like two or three day refeeds throughout the prep itself. And so the photos the day after were just a touch watery, but the days are the photos that were two days after refeeds were probably some of her best shots. And so with that data, that's what we utilized to, for that third peak. Um, and she's at her leanest and she's at uh, probably her best posing in those different aspects. So take that into con- uh, consideration. But this look for show three was was phenomenal. Yeah. And it was also something that the lessons that we took from each of the shows were, hey, this is setting us up so that we have every metric nailed, da- nailed down. So when we get to the big stage, everything's perfect. So I was fine, so to speak, (laughs) to make these mistakes on smaller stages because like when we get to the big stage, like all of that matters tenfold. And so going into the Francois show, it was so great because Alex had surprised me. Him and Mackenzie had planned a whole sneak attack on me and Mackenzie drove down and it was so great to have Friday with her, just drive over to the hotel that was just in town, get everything set up with my tan, checking in. We got to have a slumber party that night. Alex stayed here with the dogs um, and just be able to go into show day feeling like very calm. I had taken a little bit of time off of work uh, to be able just to go into the show day and show up for myself fully. Um, And I even have a video um, when I sent my check-in to Alex that morning when I woke up, I sent it over to him and Sable and I walk, uh, um, I like start the camera and I walk back and I'm just like, your overall winner checking in. Like I felt so good that day. Pictures were just like phenomenal. And I just was like, this is it. Like we are going to get this. It's all going to be worth like everything that this season was because like everything came together today and I felt so good going into that show and not only like the week going into it but like actual show day waking up having like a great bowel movement to start off being able to just feel so good and feel energized and feel alive and be like this is it I brought the look I everything came together um and then it didn't quite end the way that I wanted it to. Yeah. And uh, with me not going or me not staying at the hotel and staying here at the house, um, I didn't go to the show until maybe an hour before you went on for prejudging. And it like for me, making calls in my office and just having my normal environment makes it easier for me. I feel more in my I feel more in my element because I am. Um and so that's what I did. And so when I was driving, I, let, I, I pulled out of the garage and I took a moment because on show day, clients are going to laugh at this. I am a little, I'm high energy, high energy, cortisol's high. I'm not hungry. I, I'm stressed, but in a good way type situation. And so I was in that scenario and I sat in my car, put it in, in park as I was about to pull out and just prayed and, um, really just wanted to put my faith in uh, my, my spirituality and, and uh, said that I, I put all of my faith in you and and we've done everything that we possibly could. I was going into that show with the thought process of she's as good as she's ever going to look. She's as great as she's ever going to look. There's not anything else that we could have done differently. Everything's going to fall as it's supposed to. Um, and unfortunately, the way that things fell how they were supposed to, I guess. 
um, wasn't in the direction that I would have liked uh, because that was a, a tough that was a tough realization for me after that show because I had I had said in that prayer that um, however the call cards fall I am I am happy with what we've done I'm proud of what we've done um, in saying that I think that I had an underlying thought subconsciously of like we're getting this overall. <laughs> Um, so I'm definitely okay with it. I'm sure that that was you know, crossing my mind, but I think that making that statement prior to going in was something that I wanted to keep a promise to myself of like, you said that you were, you were good with this. You, you said that you were proud of, of everything that, um, you guys accomplished. You were proud of how Sue looked that day, all these things. And if you're going to say that, like you need to stick to your word here. And so, um, that was, a, that was, it was, it's a challenging season. Yes. It's a very challenging season. Yeah. And I um, went on for novice and um, I I just like, I remember at Indy looking around at all of the girls and I try not to like sit there and just compare myself because it's like, it doesn't matter. It matters what you bring to the stage. But I remember at Indy thinking like, there's no way I don't get first, but like if worst case scenario, I get second and I get the qualification. Then at North Coast, I remember looking around and being like, there is no way I don't get first. And I vocalize this because I've had quite an issue within confidence. And I've also had an issue within like vocalizing like, you guys wait, like I'm bringing home first because like I've also gone on stage and not done that. And so I don't want to embarrass myself and say like, I'm bringing this home, I'm getting all of this and then not doing that. And so I remember going on for North Coast and being like, I'm going to win the class hands down, I'm going to be in the overall. Like, that's really exciting. And we were thinking about like, oh, if we have to wait for the rest of the show to be over, what time are we going to be driving home? Do we stay at the hotel? Like, we were having those conversations. And then at the Francois to go up there and be like, I'm going to to win and I'm getting this qualification and we're going on to do what we said we are going to do. And to walk on and on novice, they immediately moved me to the end. And I was like in shock. And I tell clients and we talk very much to clients of like, don't let your mood change when you're on stage because that can affect your judging as well as it's just poor sportsmanship. And so I stood there, smiled, like didn't let like anything fall. We walk off stage and I had my phone backstage and I just remember texting Alex and being like, what the fuck? Like, why did they move me? And um. Alex just responded and was like, it's over. Like, you can't focus on that. Like, focus on open. And I was like, all right, he's right. I just need to show up because sometimes they can judge novice and open differently just by saying, like, you don't fit the novice look kind of thing. So I was like, all right, Sue, so just have confidence in yourself. Go out there. Get it done. Like, you have this. Your physique is competitive at the national level. Like, you can get your pro card this year. And I went out there for open, and they did two calls outs and I was in the second call out and I just remember standing there being like this is the end of my season right now and I wasn't ready so to speak for this to be the end um but it was something that I had to I I walked off the stage and like Mackenzie like I said was staying in my room and she was like do you want me to be in the room do you want some space for yourself like what's your situation and she had to run a few errands I was like you go and run the errands I'll just kind of take some time for myself and then like just text me when you're coming back and that'll all be good um and when we were in the room um she was asking how I was doing and just trying to like get a feel for where my emotions were at and I was like I don't even want to say this because I didn't want my season to be over the show. But like, I think the lesson I needed to learn was like finding my worth outside of the judging. And each show going into it, I was self-conscious or not competent enough in the fact of like, you have it and you are proud of 100% 
everything that went into this physique. And like I said, I took those pictures that morning and leading into the show and just being so proud of like you accomplished what you set out to accomplish. And then that not to be rewarded in front of friends, family, colleagues, and all of this was so difficult to experience. And it still is. And I was talking to Miguel kind of like after everything. Um, and I was like, it was kind of hard to just prove only to myself that I was good enough. <laughs> and it's like, that's what people search for their whole lives is like to prove to themselves or like you need to have that peace within yourself. And in that moment, I had it. And then I let it go so quickly as soon as the cards turned out of my favor. And I've had to work like every day since then to like reestablish like your worth isn't in those placings. Yes, it is a sport and I'm competitive and I like to win and I hate to lose. But I also had to recognize like what was what I gave into it, what I accomplished and not chase past what I needed to of like, I think something really powerful within any success that you're looking for is like knowing when to walk away or knowing when to pivot and change directions. And there was a lot of bitterness leaving that show. I'm not going to try and be like, oh, I learned a lesson and I was all peace right. and flowers. And it, and it was so hard because there was so many people and I don't, I, I, I haven't, and I talked about this a little bit on my story. Um, people were very upset at times. Um, I haven't spoke a lot on it because it's it's also my wife. It's my wife and my competitor. And so, in that context, if it was a if it was just my competitor, I'd probably be a little bit more vocal because I feel as though that. Um, with it also being my wife, I feel like most people would take it as I'm being a sore loser, or I'm being a baby back bitch or something along those lines. Baby back and bitch. I can assure you, like if you know me to my core, I will never complain about something I know is fact. First show, you did not hear me complain. Second show, I did not complain because there was things that needed to be fixed. There was things within her posing. There was things within her conditioning. Show one needed to be addressed. With show two, her color was off, and I, I take uh, responsibility within that. Uh, I, I, I take responsibility at all times, whether that is um, a, a client's conditioning or how she's presenting on stage, uh, how she handles reversing, all those things. Everything I, I, I take a good bit of accountability for because that's just my nature. And I feel as though that I'm there to guide. And if the individual is not being guided well, they're not going to execute well. Show three um, is one where I can uh, feel confident in saying that there was nothing off. So now you get me complaining a little bit. Um, so that's the that's the thing there. And it, it was tough because the quantity of people that came up to me that and came up to Sue that were like, I don't know what the judges were thinking. I I wholeheartedly appreciate and understand where you're coming from. But it is very challenging now that I've had three shows in a row for, for Sue um, that have all ended in this outcome where I'm having other individuals coming up to me and be like, I don't get it. What happened? And I'm like, I do not get it either. And if I did get it, I'd have fixed it. But it just continues to happen. And so I, I, I don't know. Um, and so within that, I, I think that that was you know, a big part of the, the challenge as a whole too. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, yeah, challenging is the really only word. It was a very testing season. Um, and it was also adding on the layer of like, again, we are not only coach client navigating through this, but he is also my husband seeing me hurting um, and seeing me crying and seeing like me not getting what we both felt that I did deserve in that moment. And that's extremely difficult as a coach who's been by your side the whole prep to experience that. Like if you're a competitor, recognize like your coach is emotionally invested and your prep does take an emotional toll on your coach. So that plus the emotional toll of being my husband, plus the side of he was like, I need my business partner back. Because even though we had the discussion of prep needs to come first, it doesn't 
doesn't make it any easier when he's getting less output from me from a business partner. So there was like this immense amount of grace he was giving me as a husband and grace he was giving me as a business partner while pushing me as hard as he could as a coach, but then having frustration, rightfully so, as a business partner of like, I understand the circumstance, I know what we're going for, but like I still need you as this person. And then also having frustration as a husband of like, I need you as my wife instead of just this person that is going thing to thing to thing to thing to not even allow yourself to have like a casual conversation because it's not in your schedule because you have to be so regimented during prep and especially with everything that was on my plate every single day was booked out like minute by minute so there wasn't flex for him as my husband and that's not fair but he understood I understood that. yeah he understood what we were pushing for but that doesn't make it any less hard yeah. uh so all of these emotions are kind of happening plus add on we had planned to leave three days later to drive to chattanooga and so then it was this conversation of are we still going or not because alex had a competitor there and he had purposely only had a one other competitor there because that was the show from the beginning of the season that we planned everything around for me of this is the national show that we're doing. What regional show are we doing? And so he didn't have competitors being pushed to that show because he wanted to be there to support me as my husband and as my coach. And he knew he couldn't do that if he had five other girls there or six other girls there. Yeah. I, the thing for me there is that, um, I feel the most comfortable at the cap of like five to seven for a show. It with with Sue specifically, I understand that that's kind of like three. Like mm -hmm. it's just it's the the nature in which I have to, like the level of focus and the other individual that we had doing junior nats. Morgan did amazing. Mm -hmm. um, she was she was fantastic. Uh, ended up placing fourth in a very very comp uh, competitive class, and I was so proud of what she brought and, and we nailed her peak and all those things. Um, but I understood that going in. And so scheduling other clients and national shows, we went to other shows specifically for, for that reason. Um, and so, um, yeah. Yeah. So there was, obviously I was trying to navigate through everything that the past 20 plus weeks had been for me of all of the experience I had through prep, all of the mental battles I had had and everything that I had either suppressed or worked through during those 20 weeks because we had also a lot happen in business and a lot happen in our life and we had just moved so much going on. So now I'm trying to process all of this while Alex is trying to show up or not trying, he is showing up for Morgan as a coach and showing up for all of his other clients. I'm trying to show up for my clients and for PD, but also trying to give myself space. And then I'm also trying to be very aware of, I don't want to just dump my emotions on him right now, because again, I understand the end goal and Morgan has a chance at going pro. And so like we get to Tuesday of the next week and Alex is like, I feel so disconnected from you. Like I, I'm having like a hard time with this and I, I had to be say like, I'm having a hard time too, but I understand it's not the time or place for us to sit and talk about my emotions. Like we have to get past Chattanooga to have an actual conversation about all of this and like what the next steps are, because it was kind of like, are we going to push to another show? Is the season done? What does this look like? But regardless of what the answer to that conversation was, I knew that I was going to be fine the week of Chattanooga as far as implementing a game plan. And I I knew I also needed the week to not think like I'm still in prep and we'll decide what the call is from there. And so we are both uh, very not aligned during that week going to Chattanooga, trying to both show up for the things that we needed to. So me showing up for myself and Alex showing up for everyone else. And then going, then we decided to go to Chattanooga, but we didn't go until later in the week and to get there. And then of course the emotion of like, this was supposed to be like a show for me, but then I also have to put myself aside and recognize this is now a show for Alex and Morgan. And I am so, so glad that we did go not only for you um, and for Morgan and to see her and support, but also just for the fact of not letting 
like my selfishness or my emotions. I think it was a good growth situation for us to push through and experience that. Because like I said at the beginning, a lot of people have been so considerate of my emotions and I don't feel like enough people understand enough to be considerate of Alex's emotions. Not that people don't care about Alex. People care, trust. Um, But just not the understanding that goes into the emotional roller coaster that all of this was and everything that it held for him. Yeah. And and also, I'm not overly vocal with the emotional aspect that's going on with me. I'm very much so, I've got it taken care of. I'm good. Let's push forward. And I'm a workhorse in the nature of I'm going to just put my head down and go. Um, And so I'm able to really uh, go tunnel vision. I mean, that was basically me for the last, like this is the first week that I've been out of it, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very able to go into tunnel vision and hone in on specific goals. And I it doesn't make other people around me super happy because I shut out basically everything and I just work. And, um, you know, uh, <laughs> employees are like, well, I haven't heard from Alex. What's Alex doing? I, we don't know what's going on. It's like nobody heard from me. Mm-hmm. I've got a short list of people that I contact when I'm in those zones. And it's literally my wife, uh, my mom and my dad really are like the three people I'll contact Miguel now because <laughs> he's here every day. Uh, but that's uh, about it. And that's kind of the, the scenario that I was in. And I think that um, from an emotional standpoint, it's it's challenging from a, a coaching perspective uh, because like from a winning standpoint, this is what is grading your work. Um, you, you're getting a, a, a test completion. Every time a competitor gets on stage, you're getting a graded report back to you. And I felt as though that um, throughout the, the beginning portion of this year that I was not getting good grades. Um, I felt as though that I was falling short. I was happy with looks. And I felt as though that I was I was shooting for something that was not being sought after from a judging standpoint, not just in Ohio, but I was getting that in other regions as well. And so going to junior Nats was a very pivotal time in my mental health as well as my self-confidence as a whole because it felt as though that, oh my gosh, this is what I've been shooting for this whole time. This is the look that has been, I've been shooting for with every competitor and it's being rewarded on the national stage. Um, They're giving people time to pose. (laughs) That part too. And and so that was a, a big moment for me and, uh, with, with Morgan doing as well as she did, I, uh, Will Whitman, shout out to Will, love shout Will so much. Um, hopefully see you soon. And Will had taken some incredible pictures of, of Morgan. And, uh, I, I think the, the depth of just what that means to me, those, those, uh, pictures, uh, is, is so much more than I could that, that just the naked eye sees because I had sent him a video <laughs> after, uh, I got the, like the, finished photos, the edited photos, and sent him a video of just expressing kind of like where I was at mentally, how much they meant to me, how much I appreciate him so abundantly. And uh, he just, you know, expressed how much he loves both of us and all that kind of stuff. But it was great to have those photos. I look forward to having one of those printed in my office and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly. No worries. We got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits, as well as home and gym options, complete with a timer in there, videos to the training, and everything else you need to be successful. So can't wait to hear how much you love it. And I want to say like throughout the whole week leading in, like Alex would prompt me to like talk about stuff. Um, So it's not like he was just cold hearted, focused on everything. He would prompt me and I would be like, hey, that's not your focus right now. Like you need to be focused on Morgan. Like you owe it to yourself of everything you've poured into this season, everything you've poured into Morgan to have that confidence. Because as much as it hit my confidence each show to be like, they're not like they don't like my look. It also, like he said, judges his work. And as much as I would be there, like, no, like it's not you. It it is. And that's very difficult, again, the emotion side of things. Um, so actually in between pre-judging and finals of Chattanooga, we were sitting there and Alex like looks up and he was like, well, are you like mentally in it or what? 
And I was like, what are you referencing right now? We're sitting here talking about God knows what. And he was like, are you mentally in it to like go forward with a prep? Because again, we had said that we were going to discuss things after Chattanooga. And I was like, if you're in a good spot to discuss right now, I like I'm good to discuss, but I want to make sure that I'm being respectful of what this is for you. And one of the questions here was, what are your plans now post show or are there any other shows? Um, so Mary, thanks so much for asking that. And we seriously decided going into uh do USAs, which from Junior Nats was six weeks and it's in Vegas. So six weeks gave us time to get a look together and get requalified because the other national show was Universe and that's this weekend actually, or was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this weekend. weekend. So it was two weeks after Junior Nats. So that would have been, hey, you have to leave Junior Nats, start a peak week and then qualify and then travel to New York and go to Universe. So that wasn't really in the cards to do something in two weeks. So the only option was to do something in six weeks. And we sat down and seriously talked through what was going to happen and what our options were. And we thought about USAs very strongly. And it was kind of like the look is there and I can still do this but should I still do this? Um, so we were kind of split back and forth. Um, and I don't know if you want to share kind of where your head was at with this, um, but I'll say like my head was mostly at everything that competing had kind of taken away from other aspects of my life um, and knowing what needed me to keep going forward. Um, and that's kind of how I came to my conclusion. And honestly, how we came to our conclusion together was like what we're wanting to accomplish the rest of this year doesn't completely um, revolve around if I get a pro card or not. Um, and like I had mentioned, like Alex needed his co-owner back. He needed his business partner back. And I was just at a lower capacity. And again, it wasn't as high of a priority. So I was running on empty. He was running on empty and like leaning on each other on empty, trying to get things figured out. And six weeks in prep, is short time, but it's also a, a time. long time. Yeah. And we had told our staff, we had told a lot of people of like, give us grace as we get through Chattanooga and then like, well, you, I'll be back and we'll be good to go. And I felt that it was very disrespectful to our staff as well as my clients and my husband, my coach and all of that to just choose the route that was going to serve um, a narrative that didn't need to be served. I don't know if disrespect, not very disrespectful. That's I don't know how the, I felt. Okay. I don't think that that's the case. I don't think that anyone would have viewed it that way. Um, from a coaching standpoint, I'm always going to view it as, the, is, is the job complete? Did you complete what you were asked to do? And so in this context, I had not completed anything I was asked to do. <laughs> I, that is a joke. I was <laughs> I got a, a lot accomplished in different ways than I had anticipated. But in my mind, um, something that I my my dad is a, a big aspect of like my mentality as an adult now. Um, a lot of the things that he taught me as a child and, and still teaches me to this day have a lot to do with how I think about things and, and how I go about things. And so one of his big phrases as I was a kid, um, and and something that he helped me so much with learning delayed gratification is that he would always recite to me, your job's not done. Your job's not done when I was going through a different uh, task, mostly sports related. And a, a lot of the the job was to win you know championships with my teams to um, to earn the accolades that I was I was wanting to as an athlete. And so one of the big things that he always reiterated to me was your job's not done. We'd have we'd have things to celebrate, we would review and then it's like the job's not done. You need to keep going. You need to keep progressing. This is just a step to the next step and you're going to continue to go until you get to the top of this mountain and we're going to go to the next one and we're going to keep going. And so I apply a lot of that to to my work now. And it is a large part of, of why physique development is successful now. I, I believe that to my core. And so with that being like one of my big whys, it was an immediate knee jerk reaction of let's go on to USA's. 
it's a, it, it, it fulfills the finishing the job. It fulfills what I was setting out to do for Sue's prep. The health aspect to it in terms of the duration of the prep, how low food was going to need to continue to be. Could I give her a, a diet break to where we could have higher food for maybe two weeks of that time frame? If we did that, could we come back down without getting, because there's there's a look when the body is just tired. Mm -hmm. You look run down. It's, it's, the lines are a little blurred. It's not something that you can necessarily fix with, with fullness or, or getting more lean. It's just the body is beat. Mm -hmm. I knew we were close to that. Understanding that, can we work through it? Maybe, maybe not. And then the aspect of we've, we've, we've swung and foul tip three times. We're taking a massive swing and, and potentially taking away a lot of things from other aspects of our life within the business, within so on and so forth. Um, we're taking a massive swing to go another six weeks and take away from the other aspects. Is it worth it? Like, is that pro card going to be worth those things being missed out on? And depends on what moment you ask me in, depends on what day you ask me in, I would say yes or I would say no. Greater majority of the time, I would say no in this instance. And the, and the pro card, the, the beautiful thing is, is that the pro card is always there. Mm -hmm. um, if, if Sue decides to compete in a year, five years, 10 years, that can, that pro card's still there. Um, and so that's something that I, I found peace in, uh, not a, not an easy pill to swallow, uh, as a, as a whole, but, um, that was, you know, what went into my mindset. Yeah. And, uh, like with us talking back and forth about it, it was, I mean, my, my health was a big priority, of course, but of looking at like, is your physique really going to improve because of your health and because of the stress that you're under and prolonging a prep at that point. Um, and again, we'd have to do a minimum of two shows because we'd have to still qualify um, and then also travel to Vegas, deal with all of that, taking more time away from work. And as I've expressed multiple times, very financially draining. When you plan to do two shows and you do three, but then also have to pay a lot of the things that you had scheduled for the original show because you don't get your money back. It turned into four. Yeah, it turned into four. Um, that's very financially draining, especially when I'm at a lower capacity for work. So I'm not getting that side back. Yes. I mean, we can get, we can open up a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of this year, uh, we, we took the opportunity to have Sue in a greater CEO type role within physique development. So she ended up taking a step back from a, a large majority of her client work. Um, and some of those clients went to our other coaches and those different aspects. And so within that, it was a, a financial commitment on our end, a, a very big financial commitment. A bet on the business. Uh, yes, a bet on us, a bet on the business, um, as well as bringing on an entire media <laughs> <laughs> department to the team, which was so needed. And I'm so grateful. And all of the gambling on ourselves, I'm not um, looking for sympathy on that front because I'm very happy with the decisions we made. I, I'm 100% confident in the decisions we made. And I think that those are going to pay off in, in due time as a whole. But to just give a full picture to kind of what that looks like, it's been a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I think it was also just like a personal challenge of feeling like I'm not contributing. I'm still contributing a lot, but I'm not contributing as much financially. And like, I mean, marriages and relationships when it comes to finances can get extremely complicated. And I'm so thankful for a partner who understood and wanted to bet on me taking like an income cut, even though I'm still working the same amount for the betterment of the business. And he always made sure when I made comments about things of reassuring me, like we are a team, we're doing this together. This is the goal. This is what we're going after. But I'm not going to sit here and act like it didn't have an impact for me to see like buying all of these things for shows and see that financial drainage and to be like, oh, it's no big deal. Like this is just for everyone to also see like the tired in Alex's eyes and see how exhausted he was and all of these different factors. We had to make a choice on what was going to be best. And when we weigh the pros and cons, 
the cons outweighed the pros for continuing on. And we did have a discussion of like, hey, we're going to end things. Reverse starts now. Um, and in a year's time, we'll revisit if we do want to get back on stage because people had asked of, um, is there... Um, how do you cope with the idea that you m never may compete again? Or um, um, there was another question in regards to that of saying- Like how did your, with this, how the season ended, does that change your future prep yeah, goals? Yeah, change goals for future prep. Thank you. Um, and then there's one that was, are you nervous to be done competing? And we had a discussion of, hey, in a year's time, we'll look back, we'll see if we're in a good spot. And if we want to start a prep, we will, even though we had, or I had at least gone into the season thinking this is going to be my last season. And I think that me going into this season at peace so that this was going to be my last season, period, without knowing how it was going to pan out, helps me as far as like those nerves or that mindset of never competing again, because I had already in my head decided that was going to be the case. Um, and I'm not completely closed off to not doing, to like never competing again. Uh, but we... I made sure like as we left that conversation of saying like if we get to a year and I'm not interested like are you going to be okay with that because again this is Alex's work and he knows how capable I am of achieving this like I I could even be competitive on the pro stage if I wanted to pour that time into it um, so we had to have that discussion to make sure we were on the same page of what this looked like but also giving ourselves space to experience and feel what we needed to feel in the meantime. So I don't feel super nervous of the thought of if I compete again or if I don't compete again. Um, I wouldn't say that, um, I would say that this does change the goals for future prep because if I would have gotten my pro card this year, then that would have been very definite of like, I'm not going on to a pro show or to compete in the pro leagues. Um, I had already kind of personally made that decision, uh, but I'm not personally nervous to never be competing again because I think that competing has served me in so many ways. It's brought so much positivity into my life, really incredible people into my life. Um, it's taught me so many lessons, some lessons I did not want to learn um, and some lessons I willfully learned. And it's allowed me to level up within my mentality and to recognize how capable I am. Um, and it's also allowed me to recognize my worth outside of a placing, which is a really cool feeling to have. So I don't really have nerves about not competing again. I'm sure at some point I'll get, because I mean, the grass is always greener. You get super far into a reverse and then you're like, I miss the grind of prep. Uh, but it's all just going to kind of depend on what all's going on in our life. And I have a lot of things to be excited about within our, like a lot of things I'm excited about within our business. And I've just been so happy these past two weeks to be able to pour more time into those aspects and truly feel like I'm doing something that's aligned with what my end goal is and being able to accomplish those things. But I'll always love training. I will always, like I said, have Alex as my um, partner when it comes to like how my physique looks and being able to put things together. And we plan on having a lot of fun within training and just getting after it. Yeah. And I think that um, like speaking to the timeline that we said a year, um, this is something that I utilize with all of my clients when we're talking about, are we going to do a show? Are we not going to do a show? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, make a decision, create a timeline on said decision, stick to said decision, wherever your head is at, at that moment. And you feel like you're leaning towards that direction. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to have a timeline of maybe three months, six months, a year. And we will revisit that question and see what the pros and cons were of you just making the decision, the whatever was decided, and then we will see what the option is of making the other decision. But until that time, stop wasting your mental energy on things that just need a decision. You have No one knows the answer to them. You just need to make one and see how it works, and then reassess, see how it works, and you just keep going. And you just keep need to make more decisions and less pondering on, should I do this, should I do that? Just do something and let it be. Yes, we feel very passionately about I, this. 
painfully. <laughs> <laughs> and just with competing in general, I mean, there are instances where it makes sense to compete back-to-back -back seasons, um, and your coach should be able to tell you when that makes sense. And if they can't and they lead you down a wrong road, that's their own thing. Um, but it has always been for myself of when I leave a season of really trying to completely shift my mindset as to what's coming up next and what that focus needs to be on and knowing like I am not even going to entertain the idea of getting back on stage until there has been changes that are made that you you need to make going forward. Like we talked about this after the show of like the biggest mistake people make when it comes to post show or like um, feeling like they need to jump into a show or taking an off season and getting into a show is not truly understanding what needs to change for them to get that better placing. And if you think like, oh, I got a good placing at the regional level or even at the national level and like now I took time off, I'm good and now it's the next step to go back on stage. If you didn't truly change what actually needed to be changed, you're wasting a lot of time and money and emotions going into that prep. And that's also very inconsiderate to those surrounding you. Correct. Well, I'll go through a few of these questions here um, that we haven't touched let's, on. Let's save that for another. All right. We're going to save that for another let's time. Let's save that for another pod because uh, we're, we're running at like a, an hour 20 Okay. Because um, we had some great questions about post-show and how to navigate that as a competitor. So we're going to do another podcast all on that. But uh, just want to thank you guys again for all of the support. I, I'm just so, so thankful. I'm grateful for you guys. Thank you.